uh, back on track. No, I, I completely relate. Uh, I, I think it's probably a skill that a lot of people have mastered with the, uh, the backwards dieting. Uh, yeah. I, I have not been able to figure it out yet. Yeah, honestly, reverse dieting after a show is harder than dieting into the show. Because yeah. dieting into the show, you have that goal set, that focus on the show, and everything's focused on that. I'll suffer, I'll do whatever. But after the show, it's like all that like focus on that one competition is gone, unless you're planning on doing another show. And it's like, I can finally eat whatever. I can be a normal person for a little while. Mm-hmm. And so it's hard to control. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I, I have not been able to figure it out. I think I put on, <laughs> I probably put on like 20 pounds within like a month after my last show. So, uh, um, the worst part is when your show is right, right before the holidays though. Gosh. And then it's like, man, I had such bad edema and like just water retention. It's like inflammation. It was horrible. So like it took a it took like a full week of going low carbs to get all that just back to normal, just, just to get a pump. Oh, dude! Well, I couldn't even. My lower back pumps were so painful from all the water retention and stuff. Yep. That like I couldn't stand on my feet for more than ten minutes without my back hurting. Wow. It was horrible. I wasn't even getting that good of workouts for the first week after the show. Mm-hmm. It was just so painful. Man. Did you schedule like uh, photo shoots and whatnot with your sponsors? Uh, like I had one Olympia? photo shoot, one photo shoot the next morning after the Olympia, and and that was it. Okay. That yeah. Was, it, I saw that you you went with um. What was the supplement company you went with recently? Um, Fusion Muscle. Fusion. Fusion. Yeah, that, they're it, Canadian. It, they're a Canadian company, but this year, last year they near the end of last year they were doing a lot of work um with some companies and uh warehouses and stuff here in florida okay and so they're this year they're trying to make a big move into uh branching out into the states and the first distribution area is going to be out of florida so okay. hopefully right Daytona, or? we start doing a lot of i think it's gonna be more out of south florida okay but i know ben pikolsky's part of uh he's oh. um somehow part of the company as well uh-huh. so and he's out of tampa so um but you know he's originally he's Canadian, so he knows the company well, and I think uh, he's involved in there somehow. So uh, hopefully this year they start doing some big things with branching out into the states and stuff. Yeah, I I feel like that's like a big thing. Um, I know Fuad Abiyad always talks about it, like uh, Canadian bodybuilding and, and Canadian uh, supplementation. Like it when you look at it, people are like, oh, it's Canadian, that's not going to work for me. When in reality, it it doesn't really matter. I mean, you can have uh, you can have like that Favre guy over at, out of France. Like it doesn't really matter about the supplement brand. Cause I mean, everything ships worldwide nowadays. Exactly. Yeah. And it, you know, sometimes it does take a couple more days for it to get their stuff to get to me, but you know, it has to go through customs, has to do all that, but you know, it's good. They're good products. They work really well. And uh, the only thing that they're missing right now is the, the protein powder is a blended source and I want a pure isolate. And I've told no. them that, and they said they're going to work on it. So okay, so they yeah. already have a, a protein, um, a blend. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, that's a blended source, which is okay, but and it tastes great. The flavors mm-hmm. are phenomenal. But you know, post workout, I want a a way a pure way isolate. Yep. Shuttle it to the muscle a lot quicker. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Um, man, post workout, I long I remember for the longest time I didn't know you were supposed to consume carbs. Uh, pre and post workout, uh, and then I used to also always do my because I'm in the military. I used to always do my two mile run before I work out, so I'd just be like completely flat, just black. Oh yeah. And then I'd go in and try hitting like big, well, I mean big for me, like big squats and whatnot. And it just it never yeah. clicked. And then I finally I started see. like really getting into bodybuilding, and then I started learning. Uh, I started learning a lot. So I was just talking to a client actually about that, where she she was going through like on three mile runs right before training. Mm. and then she wasn't eating nearly enough she was scared of carbs you know stuff like that so yeah it's it's definitely a learning process as you go mm-hmm. yeah you gotta you gotta choose your uh, uh where you're getting your information from yeah because uh, if, if you're getting into bodybuilding especially like if clients for you i'm assuming uh are you mostly into like contest prep or like transformation i have lifestyle clients and contest lifestyle. prep 
Yeah, okay. uh, off season uh, contest prep and just lifestyle clients. You know, whatever. You know, everybody has their own goal. So mm-hmm. first thing I do whenever I get a new client is I ask them what their goal is. You know, not everyone wants to be a bodybuilder. You yep. know, some people just want to get healthier. Some people just want to get leaner. Some people want to get bigger. You know, so whatever their goal is, and I'll just formulate their plan around that. Okay. That makes a lot of sense because, like you said, yeah, everyone has different goals. And, I mean, you can't you can't really give them cookie cutter. Uh, yeah, well, of course not. And, not, n- you know what, 90-something percent of your clientele is not going to want to look like you. You exactly. know, it's like most people that come into the gym that I train in person as well. So I, I do a few – a few like uh, clients in person where I train them at the gym and most oh. of them don't want to look like me. They don't, no. that's not anywhere in their goals or aspirations. They just want to get healthier. They want to look better, you know, look better at the beach, whatever. Yeah. And, and to be honest, you're probably one of the most aesthetic guys in the 212. So, I mean, when people look at you, yeah, you're a monster for a normal person, but I mean, you still <laughs> look very pleasant. Even with a t-shirt, I'm sure you look, you know, not terribly uh, terrifying. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah. My wife wishes I could uh, put dress clothes on a little better. Man. <laughs> that doesn't work so well. I'm nowhere near where you're at. I mean, I'm 6'2", and I'm like 240, not in shape. And I have, I've have i always had difficulty fitting in my military, the dress uniforms. Oh, yeah. It's... Uh, and then, like, I fluctuate. I just started my cut, uh, my, you know, cut. And I'm already down five pounds. But I put on like 50 pounds this off season, and probably not a lot of it in good weight. Uh, so I'm really terrified to see. Well, how many shows <laughs> have you done so far? So I've done two um, novice natural shows. And then this year I want to do the NPC Midwest naturals. Uh, that's kind of like I really want to step into uh, the NPC realm. Uh, yeah. And, th- and then who knows? Who knows where the, uh, the, the world's going to take me? But. Um, right now, I mean, just that's like small, very shows. similar to how I got started. Yeah. So, so um, let's, let's jump right into that one. Uh, 2015, you won the, I think it was the diamond cup in, uh, men's lightweight, light, heavy, light, heavy. So you won that. I was Did a small light heavy shows. But... Oh yeah. <laughs> I'll pull some photos up for the, for the audience, but, um, what did you do any shows before that one? Cause that's kind of crazy I, for you to jump in and win your first show. I was actually a pro in the NGA in the natural okay. um, organizations first. Um, yeah, so I did. Um, I did uh, 2014. I turned pro in the NGA okay. um, at my first NGA show. I had done two OCB shows before that. Okay, um, OCB, yep. Yeah, and then I did the NGA and I turned pro in that. I did two pro shows. And then uh, I just, you know, kind of realized that you're not really going anywhere in those natural organizations. Nope. I think they're amazing as far as getting your feet wet. Yep. And if you're just doing it as a hobby, just to give you something to focus on mm-hmm. and stuff like that, a goal. But um, if you're really trying to make something out of it, you know, the MPC, the IFBB is where you got to be, really. So, um 2015 i decided to jump into the my first npc show had no idea what to expect but the diamond classic was actually a drug tested show in the npc interesting so i did that and i won the overall and then i went straight to the universe okay uh, because the universe was supposed to be a drug tested show as well Mm. um but uh i learned my lesson pretty quick there i was like all right i'm winning i'm winning i'm winning i'm winning Let's go straight to the universe. I got this. I'm going to turn pro. And I got like ninth place and mm. light heavyweight bodybuilding there. And I look back at those pictures and I was, it's a very good thing I did not turn pro quickly because mm-hmm. I had a lot to learn. Yeah. It, were you uh, Were you usually pretty consistent with coming in in shape uh, on that natural side? Um, It was a process, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Uh, you know, I got in better shape each time. Yep. You know, my first show, it was the best shape I'd ever been in, but it was oh, really okay. the first time I'd ever seen abs. It's like up yep. until that point, I had never really been lean. Like all through high school, I was lean, but I wasn't mm-hmm. like dieting. Like I was lean eating 
peanut butter sandwiches and hot pockets. Yes. When I was in high school. I had a crazy metabolism, you know. Damn. But uh, each show, I just got in a little better shape, you know. Mm-hmm. It wasn't really until uh, 2016 that I really started taking it really serious. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's when they came out with the classic division. Yeah. So after so after the universe, I was like, all right, I was too small, not lean enough. I got to get freaking huge, and I need to be at the top of light heavyweights. So I bulked like crazy for like three months, and then they announced classic. So I was mm. like, never mind. Let me start that leaning works. back down. Yeah. So, uh, and I, I did the very first uh, classic physique show they held in Florida, and I won the overall. Okay. There. That was, uh, I think it was the Southeastern USA's. Maybe um, sure. I'll I have to hold up called. real quick. Southern USA or Southeastern USA. Uh huh. But um, it was it was a good show. I once again I wasn't nearly as lean as I should have been, but I thought that's what they wanted in the classic division at the time uh-huh. when it was brand new. I thought they wanted that old school look where they weren't quite as shredded. Yep. So I did that, and then I went to uh, Junior USA's, and I ended up getting like thirteenth. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. and yep. they told me to come in smaller. Hmm. So I peeled down like crazy, went to junior nationals and I moved up to sixth place. Yep. And then went straight to North Americans, got third, which technically I should have turned pro because the two guys that beat me had already turned pro in the master's divisions. Oh, so the pro card was supposed to go to me, but, but uh, no. it is what it is. I just bit my tongue and moved on, okay. um, went to nationals, ended up in fourth. And that's where George Peterson won the overall. Okay. And then after that, I went straight to junior USA's again the next year and got my pro card. Yep. Second place there. Yeah. yeah that, I like how they do that where, um, especially, uh, is it the, the juniors and the nationals? Are those the ones that always give out a lot of cards for the second and uh, first and second places in each class? Yeah. The only difference really is juniors bodybuilding can't go pro. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember talking with uh, Ty Jordan. I just did the interview the other day with him, um, NPC guy, and uh, and he was talking about how, um, what was it? He wanted to do juniors first because he wanted to like, um, he respected the like the whole thing about bodybuilding and how you need to kind of like earn your way. Yeah. So instead of like jumping right into nationals, he wanted. I to agree do with that. The process. I mean, if you, that's what Hunter Labrada did. You mm-hmm. know. And back in the day, that's what all of them did. They would do the juniors first, and then they would move up to the nationals or USAs or whatever. You know, they went through that process. Nobody does that anymore, and everyone wants their pro card now. Yep. Everybody wants to put that title on their Instagram tag. Yeah. Yeah. Now, honestly, I, the reason I jumped straight to trying to get my pro card is I didn't know anything about it. Mm. I, did, I never had a coach until I did my first Arnold Classic. Wow. So I coached myself, and I was just kind of learning as I went. Mm-hmm. But, but you said you're usually a pretty a leaner guy, higher metabolism in high school. Yeah, I mean, like high school, I was on the weightlifting team all through high school. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know anything about nutrition. I literally, if it was pizza day in the cafeteria, I spent my whole week's worth of lunch money that day and ate as oh, much wow. as I could. Like I was just, you know, and then I'd go home, eat peanut butter sandwiches and like hot pockets and stuff. And I didn't know anything about diet. So. Okay. I mean, so let's see, we're all the way up to uh, getting your pro card at the junior second place, and then you hop right into classic physique. Uh, t- well, so you, you did pretty well in classic physique for those, what, what two years, and then you qualified for the Olympia in 2019. Now, was that off of points, or did you win a show I didn't see? I won the uh, San Antonio Pro. San Antonio, okay. Yeah. So... I, uh, um, if you're new to the channel, uh, I, I enjoy going through NPC news online and finding all the discrepancies. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, they blocked me at this point. Cause I just keep sending them like, Hey, this is wrong. This <laughs> is wrong. Cause it's like, if you're going to be the premier, uh, you know, media outlet for contest photos, right. you should it, and spell the names, right? It's oh, just, yeah. I, it, that's like a big gri- uh, gripe for me. I mean, even, uh, Ty, I just had on the other, other day, his name was TJ. Uh, Jordan, which is it, it you know, like, <laughs> just I mean, a come quick little, well, even at the, um, uh, what show I can't I think it was maybe Chicago pro mm-hmm. this year, uh, this past year, they had 
they announced me coming from the wrong city. You know, oh. just a quick little typo in there, and it's like it's not a big deal to me. I don't. It's not that. Yeah. Big, but it's just like it's a it's an easy thing to fix or to get right. But it is what it is. Mm. Well, I bet they won't do that again. Because <laughs> I mean, now I mean you're in the top ten in the world for well, no, you're eleven. It's eleven. Yeah. Ah, I've, oh, that hurts. I know. I feel like I. I feel like I should have been in that top 10. Uh-huh. Let's go ahead and talk about that right now, because I have that uh, later down the list. Um, Guy Sisternino, thoughts on uh, him placing above you? <laughs> I don't want to talk bad about anybody. Respectfully. Guy, Respectfully. Guy is uh, an awesome bodybuilder. I love, I've followed him for years. You know, he's uh, very intense. Uh, I like his, you know, his training and stuff like that. Uh, I do feel like, I was a little shocked whenever he would place ahead of me. Yep. Um, he was in great conditioning. He's got, you know, crazy legs. Yep. But I feel like I was in just as good or better conditioning mm-hmm. and have a little uh, much better shape overall. Yeah. Yep. So I, I was a bit shocked a little, honestly, whenever uh, he he got top 10 and I was right outside yeah. of it. But, you know... You can't argue with the judges. They're going to do what they do. Yeah, it you know, is what it they, is. They have their reasoning. And, you know, I think a lot of it, too, I don't think it's politics at all. Yeah. People are always talking politics. You know, I think it's human nature a lot of times that if it's somebody that you're used to seeing, somebody you've seen for years, somebody you've seen in the gym, you've created a relationship with them, yep. your eyes just kind of go to that person first. Yep. You know? Especially for for Steve, I mean, isn't guy? He's a New Yorker, right? Yeah, Jersey, Boston, I think. Jersey. Jersey. I, yeah, I'm I'm horrible. I, I I put them all together, right? In that vicinity. Uh, yeah, so you know you're gonna see you're gonna see that face again. Uh, he's gonna yeah. see that face pretty often. Yeah, and, and, and that like I said, I think it's just stuff. human nature. It's like yeah. subconsciously they're looking at that person first. It's not in, intentional. You know, it's not politics. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, even myself, I get caught up sometimes being like. They're just giving him a, a, a gift. But, I mean, in this situation, what's the difference between 11th and 10th for a guy uh, with such a, uh, a a deep resume as Guy Sternino? Yeah. Well, and, you know, honestly, in my opinion, yeah. top Being able to say I made top 10 in the world would have been awesome. Yeah. But in my head, you know, I, I'm shooting for top five this year. Yeah, and, and it was your your two twelve debut in twenty twenty. Yeah. So and honestly, I after, mean, the, what's the rush? after the Olympia last year from classic physique, yep. I told myself right off the bat my goal for twenty twenty was to switch to two twelve and qualify for the Olympia. So I had no aspirations of actually what was going to happen at the Olympia, but yeah. that was my entire goal, and I accomplished that. So yeah. Me- smart goals, you know, measurable goals. Yeah, uh, and you definitely did that. Um, a lot of shows uh, in 2020. What is it? Four, yeah. four shows total to include the Olympia. Yeah. How is that with the with the prep? Physically, I was okay. Yeah. Me- mentally, I was pretty burnt out by the end, to yeah. be honest. Um, but uh, my physique tends to get better each show usually okay i don't okay. burn out physically too much mm-hmm. um but uh in fact i was eating more food leading into the olympia than i was for any other show okay. i was like my metabolism was just on fire and i was just burning through everything so i was actually getting more food i didn't feel like it i felt depleted mm-hmm. but i was getting more food more carbs uh than i was getting the rest of the year for any other show but uh, mentally, it was getting tough for sure. Mm-hmm. How long? Um, I'm I'm terrible. Um, I don't have that one prepared. But uh, how long were you on prep from? Uh, what was it Tampa to Chicago? And then you probably didn't even have that much of a break between Chicago and the Olympia. I started 16 weeks out from Tampa. Okay. And then, what? Well, there was five weeks between Tampa and New York. Five yeah. weeks between New York and Chicago. And then nine weeks from yeah yeah that, and I that got, sounds horrible. And the the craziest part was because after Tampa, I was like mentally, I was like, all right, I'm done because that was not the best package I should have brought. Maybe I yep. need to take another, you know, 
few months to put on some more size and come in really peeled. Mm-hmm. And then they announced New York was going to be in Tampa. And I was yep. like, I called up Chris Aceto. I was like, all right, let's do this. Let's go. And I had eaten pretty much whatever I wanted for about four days at that point. Okay. And so he got me right back on track the next morning. And I pushed hard for New York. That was probably the hardest one I pushed for. And I, mm-hmm. uh, I was the lightest. I was all year too. And, um, mm-hmm. So we pushed really hard for that. And then after New York, I pretty much did the same thing before Chicago. I ate whatever I wanted for about three days. Uh And then we got right back on track. And so I was like, okay, after Chicago, he's going to let me eat whatever I want for about, you know, three, four days, maybe a week. And then I got eight weeks still before the Olympia. He texts me at three o'clock in the morning, Saturday or like Sunday or whatever. And was like, or no, Saturday. And he goes, hey enjoy sunday monday we're back on prep Dang. And I'm like, come on i thought i had a few days uh but you know i was like all right whatever you say yeah can't really argue with chris aceto <laughs> yeah yeah that's crazy and how long how long have you been with chris was it three years we started for the 2018 arnold classic okay so a little under three okay yeah like i said before that i'd never had a coach yeah, so that, I mean that's that's pretty impressive. It was, I mean, I enjoyed that though. I think, mm-hmm. you know, I think it, I I hired Chris Aceto almost as looking at it as going to college. No, oh. like, he was my ed- he's education for me. Like you know, yeah, and yeah. he's an amazing coach and he gets me peeled. Yep. But I've learned so much just from you know working with him. That's mm-hmm. helping me be a better coach. Exactly. Yep. So exactly. That was the main thing. I not only wanted to learn for myself, but learn so I could help other people better as well. Mm-hmm. And I think that's something. Uh, you know, I've learned so yeah. much. Like he does things so differently than, I, and I realized I used to over diet. I used to push myself way too hard. I would lose muscle mm-hmm. leading into shows. You mm-hmm. know, so it's definitely helped a lot. And that was the way I looked at it. Before that, I it was amazing learning a learning journey uh, coaching myself, you know, through turning pro my first two pro shows. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, I like that. That's um, I think that's very noble of you. And I know I've done it myself. Like every time I hire a coach uh, I've learned from them and, uh, even my first coach, he had an app and everything, and and I learned how to how to use the app, and then I even yeah. got it for myself with uh, a couple of the clients I have now, um, transformation uh, ladies. Yeah. So, so you're done with the Olympia. You're kind of you're backing off, but you're you're still kind of ready to pull the trigger, hop into a show this year. Most likely. Most likely. It'll be Tampa again. Yeah. I mean, yeah. might as well if it's right there. I mean, it gives me another three months of an off season, mm-hmm. you know, to really try and, you know, improve some areas, put the, bring my calories back up in a healthy way, not like I did for the week after the Olympia, <laughs> you yeah. know, but slowly <laughs> increase my calories so that I'm at a good starting point. Um, completely detox. I'm still in the detox yes. right now. Yes. So um, energy is kind of low sometimes mm-hmm. right now with that but uh yep it's to be it's you know this is a lot this is a longevity sport yes you know you got to keep people are so worried about what they look like on the outside and then their insights are rotten yep so you definitely gotta go through that detox period i'll get my blood work done probably next week mm-hmm. and uh then see where i'm at see if i need to improve any health markers before you know making another push to really grow Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts? Uh, and I feel like that's something that uh, people that don't compete or people that don't compete anymore uh, sometimes forget is is the athletes needing to take time off. Uh, I've heard from some of the other uh, bodybuilding journalists on online saying that they were really looking forward to the Olympia going back to its original date. Uh, and uh, my thought was, why would we want to keep it uh, why would we want to move it back and really push the athletes to almost have no off season, uh, especially with the way 2020 was? I mean, people like yourself uh, and, and, and um, Derek Oslin, those guys, they were on prep all year. So it's like, oh, you guys really on, need to He was time. worse than me. He yeah. started in like January. 
Yeah, he really did. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was he was pretty burnt out, I think, for sure. And he's uh, you know, definitely gonna need a good off season. A lot of people, you know, kept looking to do a show, got canceled or postponed, looking to do a show, yeah. and so they were dieting all year long. And I would definitely prefer at least another month. Mm-hmm. But you know, the way because the Olympia was so late in the year, mm-hmm. you know, I'm looking Tampa is August seventh and eighth, I think, sixth or seventh. Yeah. And um that, you know, that means I gotta start dieting in April. Mm-hmm. You know? So, so you, you have a good you have a good off season then. I've got a good, yeah, another uh another three months, you know, mm-hmm. another twelve to fourteen weeks. Mm-hmm from from now so that's not bad you know i can you know get healthy get my calories up really push for a little bit extra improvements and stuff like that but i would prefer a little longer at least another month or so to yeah. really uh there's certain areas that i i want to bring up it's usually my legs <laughs> yeah you think so it, I, in the back made or? improvements but i i uh, mentally i always see them as a weakness I think you have a month. I, I I think I fanboyed a little too much on your Instagram uh, <laughs> with your side relax and your side tricep. I mean, you have monster legs from the side. Um, I, I, I just, don't think I, I don't think I'd argue with you on uh, improvements in the legs and the back. Um, but you said that the New York that was your smallest package, right? Yeah. But yeah, you just, can you can the, tell in the legs. It was uh, yeah. I was only two hundred pounds on stage. Ooh. Actually, <laughs> at New York. I mean, I, I told Aceto after Tampa when we decided to do New York, I was like, look, I don't care what I weigh. I don't care if I'm outsized. I want to redeem myself for bringing – because I didn't bring the conditioning at Tampa. Yep. I was like, give me as peeled to the bone as possible. And yep. so – and it worked out. You know, I backstage, people were asking, dude, like Bo, uh, Derek, all of them were like, dude, you look like you put on 10 pounds since Tampa. And I'm like, actually, actually I'm 10 pounds lighter. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy to think uh, that that the um, the illusion of oh, being yeah. that condition for sure. Mm. So, so but yeah, I think from the back, I think it's mostly the adductors too. Like the I have that gap in the middle where I don't have those thick adductors, and that's really yeah. something I need to a work on a bit. Um, I can see it. Yeah, I'd and I, part of that's from probably about ten years ago. I tore my mm. in the groin area, yep. and I couldn't. I couldn't do certain exercises to build those adductor muscles for a while. And I'm just now in the past nine months, I've been able to actually start pushing that area again. Okay. What, what's your, uh, what's your secret or can you not shit? Can you not say for what, for building up your adductors? <laughs> Honestly, uh, the main two things be, is, you know, the girly machine, the adductor, Okay. you know, the, the good girls or, no, nose, oh. whatever you want to call them. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm I'm taking notes because I know um, I'm a I'm a leg dominant bodybuilder. So yeah, that was my biggest critique but on my last also, show. I think legs are too big. I think a lot of single leg exercises too will yeah. hit those single leg press, um, uh, Bulgarian split squats, mm. uh, doing uh, weighted step ups. I think. Yeah. I think all of those hit that, even lunges, mm-hmm. you know, and you can alternate like or kind of change how you take your steps on the on the lunges to really hit that area a little yes. more, a little like wider uh, steps. Mm-hmm. But I think uh, the biggest thing is really, you know, and a little wider stance on like a hack squat going with a wider stance um, or if you see my Instagram videos. uh I just posted a hamstring dominant leg workout yesterday, actually, and it I'll was. Watch that. <laughs> I went. I did the belt squat machine, like the pit shark. Yeah, 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 yeah. And a very wide stance on that, and I feel that extremely in the adductor areas. Mm-hmm. I've noticed with the wider stances, my glutes get like stupid pumped. Yeah. So maybe I need to. I don't. <laughs> it's so, someone stole my lifting shoes, so now I'm lifting oh, yeah. in, in like sneakers. I look like. Um, who is it that always wears sneakers when there's is it does guy wear sneakers when he squats? I'm not sure. I, I knew it was one of the guys where <laughs> uh Fuad was like losing his mind watching a video. He just didn't understand like 
why he was wearing just regular sneakers. Yeah, just sne- yeah, like Skechers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have I have squat shoes and I haven't used them in a while. Tom Platts made me buy them. Actually, oh, okay. I worked out with him uh, 2019. Okay. Um, just a few weeks, a couple weeks. It was like a week after the Arnold Classic, so I was like not at 100 percent strength. Mm. But he destroyed me, and uh, yep. he corrected my form on a lot of things, though. And you know, he told me when I get home, he's like, "You got to buy some squat shoes. It's going to help you a lot." And so, I need mm. to start maybe start wearing those again. Yeah, who did you end up going with, like Nordic or or Adidas? I I don't even remember. You don't even know. <laughs> it, it was a, honestly, it was a pretty cheap pair because I okay. wanted to make sure I was actually going to like it and use them. Yep. So I don't remember what brand it was. Okay, I, I try to allow uh, the athletes on the show to plug as much stuff as possible <laughs> while still making it sound and feel natural. Yeah. Um, so let's see. So Chris Aceto, you're still with Chris Aceto. Uh, you kind of have a, a good plan on, on what you want to do for this year with Tampa. Um, oh, let, let's, fall, let, let's, let's go back. Um, your thoughts on the Olympia. Do you want it earlier in the year or do you want it more towards December? Like what would be more beneficial for you and the rest of the athletes? It depends on when they make the cutoff for qualification. Yes, especially if they push the Arnold Classic farther back than August. Yeah. And yeah, and that's a weird one too. I don't, I don't know. I've heard, I've heard June. I've heard August. I've heard September. September. Yep. Yep. I, I don't know what the, that's going to happen. My wife actually is planning on doing the amateur Arnold. Oh, good. So we're really trying to figure out when it's going to happen, mm-hmm. so we can plan that. So. Okay. Um, but as far as the Olympia goes, you know, Tampa used to always be the last show to qualify, Mm -hmm. but then when they moved it to December, you had up until like October shows to qualify. And I'm thinking that if they change the quarantine rules by, by then for like Canada and stuff, Toronto Mm -hmm. pros only two weeks after Tampa. That'd be nice. So that's a possibility as well. And if that's still within the qualifications, honestly, if, even if it's not in the qualifications, it would qualify me for the next year. Mm-hmm. So that would, you know, a possibility to do that. But I don't know. I think I preferred the Olympia when it was in September. Oh, yeah. Okay. You know, because you do it and then you you have not all, right now there's no post show post Olympia shows either. Yeah, because it's right at the end of the year, so you don't get those post Olympia shows, and there's not really any shows to qualify mm-hmm. for the next year and be able to take a whole year off. Mm-hmm. You know, now so, that you mention it, what what would you think about uh, them bringing back the uh, the um, the Grand Prix tour over in Europe? I think it would be awesome. I mean, Wouldn't if it? I especially if I could get you know, had the money to go over there and do that or had sponsors that would help me out with that. Yep. You know, that would be freaking awesome. I've been talking, my wife and I've been talking a lot about trying to do like an international show here and there just to, just to travel, you know, do the show, stay there for like the whole week just to, you know, embrace the culture and, you know, be able to travel the world a little bit. And and that would be great for the sport and for fans because I feel like, in Europe, they don't have a lot of shows, even though, you know, they're bringing the the um, the UK Arnold. They're bringing that uh, this year. But I mean, that's just one extra show. I mean, they've lost so many Grand Prix um, in the last, you know, 20 some years. It's it's really unfortunate for the athletes. And, and if they want the sport to grow anymore, I think that's going to be a, an easy way, a really easy way to, to start bringing in different demographics from different countries. Yeah, for sure. I would love to do some international shows. Um, we're, there's so much uncertainty right now, though, like also yeah. with the with COVID, like, you know, with the vaccines coming out and are they going to eventually require you to have the vaccine to be travel internationally? I, I, I mean, I could see that. Yeah, I would. I could see that. My wife works in healthcare, so okay. they're like already giving it out where she's at. Uh-huh. And stuff. Yeah, the army's not forcing us to get it yet, so they're not um, forcing her, like, but they've suggested it, and yeah. so and her her mom also works in uh, as a surgeon and stuff like that, and mm-hmm. so like you know they're they're talking. My dad already went and got it. Yeah. So 
and he didn't have like I know a lot of people were talking about having reactions and stuff. He felt mm-hmm. fine all the next day, but he didn't get anything from it. No superpowers. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Hasn't turned into a zombie yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's, uh, I mean, yeah, you're, you're right. There's a lot of uncertainty, uh, especially around the 2021, uh, competition season. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm really excited to see how things go. Um, let's talk about, uh, let's do some fun stuff. Um, classic physique. They've been talking about classic physique and how it's uh, potentially going to be taking over open class. Uh, I feel like they've been talking about that for the last four, three years. Uh, but it really seems like, um, if Instagram, can somehow translate more onto the stage. What's your thoughts as being a, a, a prior classic physique champion? Um, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, I love the classic physique division, but it's, I don't see it ever overtaking bodybuilding. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a different, uh, different group of people, fans that are going to enjoy it. And probably a bigger uh, group of fans that are going to enjoy that look. But, I mean, people go to bodybuilding shows to see the freaks, yes. you know, and, you know, I don't know. I think popularity wise, you know, someone mm-hmm. like Chris Bumstead's going to, you know, be a lot more mainstream, be a lot more marketable yeah, than a big Grammy. Yes. But, you know, big Grammy's got, um, you know, millions of fans and he's, you know, I don't see it ever overtaking bodybuilding, but I do like the way that it has influenced the open bodybuilding. Absolutely. You know, yeah. they're looking, they're, they're knocking people down for having a distended gut or, you know, and making them have a better shape in open yeah. bodybuilding now. And even in the two twelve, I like, I don't think a few years ago, somebody like me, Derek Oslin, uh, you know, even George Peterson would have done as well because they were going for that, you know, really short tons of muscle, just, just as big as the open guys, but shorter, you know, and they're kind of awarding a better shape now. Yeah, I, I can completely agree. Uh, that's probably one of the biggest reasons why I love uh, 212 so much is, you know, I barely knew anything about 212. Uh, I think, when um, right when I started uh, doing the show coverage, and I was I was still calling you Jason Lau, uh, <laughs> yeah. I didn't I didn't know anything about two twelve, but I just loved the look of the two twelve competitors. Uh, so I just you know just started making content, and uh, you know oh, look I at me now it. I got I got Olympia level guys on the <laughs> channel, which is it's good for the fans and it's great for the athletes because I feel like that's something that a lot of people miss is having conversations with with athletes and and having the fans be able to watch that uh and, and have that kind of that access i don't i don't feel like it's really out there as much as it should be for sure that's why one of the main reasons i've been trying so hard to put out more content on my youtube channel too just so like yes. i don't do a very good job on my instagram of showing my personality mm-hmm. i show my my workouts and on my stories i'll show my diet and my what my what I'm eating throughout the day, I you know maybe show, you know throw uh, some funny memes on my story every now and then or whatever. Uh-huh. But I don't show my personality too much, and I probably mm-hmm. need to get better at that on Instagram. You know, do some you know actual you know live videos, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But um, I've been trying to do that more on my YouTube channel where I actually show my personality, show mm-hmm. my you know, my day in the life of what I'm, how I you know, what I go through, yes. you know, in my training and my diet and stuff like that. But I think people really enjoy like actually seeing, you know, you have your struggle days, you have, mm-hmm. you know, I still have to go to work like a normal person. I don't, yeah. just get, yeah. I, don't I don't make <laughs> enough money through bodybuilding just to sit around and, you know, eat, sleep and train. Yep. Do fast. Not yet. At least hopefully one day that'd be awesome. <laughs> But, I mean, I think people enjoy seeing the personality and just, like, that you live a normal life. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's what really sells. Um, With your YouTube channel, I've watched quite a bit of it, but, I, I, you know, obviously I can't watch everything. Are you doing shows like uh, Fan Request Fridays and uh, Q&As and stuff like that? I was just actually discussing that with my wife and with a client, um, how I'm not an organized person. (laughs) My wife is very organized. She is the one that can take care of stuff like that. But I was just talking about them and where I need to set up 
like a schedule, you know, programming basically. Yep. I mean, it is a channel and yep. you look at any other channel, like the, the CW, NBC, whatever they have programming. Yep. And I need to figure out like an actual way to set up where I have regular content on certain days that people can look forward to and I'll, not I'll just give throw you my, up a random video here and there. Yes. I'll give you my secret. Um, something I'm working with the channel right now, uh, Microsoft planner. It's free that I know of. Um, you have the buckets where you make, you know, fan request Fridays, Q and A's, post workout rants, and then you have like a general one where you can make video ideas, and then you just grab it and drop it, grab it and drop it. Yeah, and that'd then be you smart. Can, then you can hold the topics and then link it to like Google uh, Calendar and then schedule it. Yeah, so yeah, I need something like that for sure, and something like Google Calendar would remind you, you know, yes. that yep. <laughs> that's what I need is reminders because I'll completely forget. Yep, something that pops up right when you wake up, like, oh yeah, I've got to do an interview with uh, Jason Lowe today. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. that I think that would be very beneficial. Um, that's something I learned from PewDiePie was people like shows, uh, yeah. and then, like they feel like they they belong. They have um, they have some sort of interaction. Like their yeah. opinion matters. Well, and like you look at like RX Muscle, who's been doing it for years, you know. And he's got his muscle in the morning every weekday. And then he's got his, every Wednesday the um, Ask Dave, yes. you know, and stuff like So, like, people get used to seeing that. And it, it's like they know it's going to be there every Wednesday, you know. And I wouldn't say every morning for muscle in the morning, but half the time it doesn't go on to like 4 p.m. But <laughs> I have noticed that. Muscle yep. in the afternoon or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I like that. I like the idea of like having structured shows. Um, I'm thinking about doing these interviews every Saturday. Uh, so like, obviously we're recording on Saturday, but you know, this show won't go up until, oh Lord, I don't even know. Probably <laughs> like <laughs> edit it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not too bad about the editing. I I just need to have like an hour or two to sit down and splice it up, which I don't yeah. think people understand how long it takes to edit, especially when I'll oh, put yeah. in all the overlays and the comparisons. I didn't stuff. get it until I started doing it all myself too. And I was like, man, the, the Instagram's so easy, you know, take a yeah. quick video, take a quick picture, make some yeah. hashtags. YouTube's a lot of work. Yeah. That's, that's why people pay people to do it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so, you know, classics probably not going to overtake, uh, the opening class. Yeah. The only caveat I would give is if like the C bum fan, the Chris Bumstead fans or the Brian Ainsley fans, if they actually started buying tickets in bulk and started actually going to a lot of shows and, and making it known that, Hey, we're here to see classic. I feel like that would greatly affect the, the prize money. Um, I, uh, I do feel the like discrepancy between the divisions and prize money is mm -hmm. a little ridiculous. It's the, 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 the gap is pretty insane. I, I mean, what did classic get like 30 grand this year? For first yeah, place, 30, 30 or 40, something yeah. like that. I think yeah. uh, 212 got like 40 or I got 50, I think. Maybe, yeah. And then open gets 400,000. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a very large gap. Um, and I agree that open should get the most. Yep. You know, they have to, it's, it not only takes the most toll on their bodies, but it also, you know, takes the longest to achieve that type of physique. They mm -hmm. have to put in years and years of work where, you know, it doesn't take quite as long to get to the classic physique. It's still a ton of work, you mm -hmm. know, and takes takes time and consistency, but not as much as getting up there as a, you know, 260 pounds shredded. Yes. So I do agree they should get the most, but I think it should be a little more evenly spread. Mm -hmm. I mean, something I think Ian, Ian was on Fuad's podcast one time uh, right after the Olympia. And uh -huh. I think Fuad asked him, uh, he's like, so do you, as Chris's coach, do you get a cut of his prize money? He's like, no, I got seventh hey. place and I made just as much as him at oh. seventh place. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I think, um, my opinion, I, I like to, I like to do these little games is, uh, I think that if, uh, uh you know, Jim Manning and, and, and all that team there, uh, Tim Gardner and all those guys, if they were to like on the ballots where you actually buy your ticket, if you check off where uh why you're here because i feel yeah. like as in bulk the people that are going to bodybuilding shows are there to watch bodybuilding now my opinion classic physique is bodybuilding it's just a different interpretation of bodybuilding uh, uh, I agree. 
Yeah, but it's still bodybuilding. I, I feel like that's yeah. a silly conversation, a uh, silly argument people have in my comments. Um, but yeah, if they did something like that where you could purchase your tickets and tell them which class you're going to watch, you know, if if it says you know, 60% of the, the sales and tickets and, and web streams uh, for the pay-per-view, if it says it's 60% classic, then, I mean, there you go. Like, adjust the purses accordingly. I mean, yeah, if, if I they want to be fair. Too is, you know, people that... You know, a lot of it's going to be families, uh, friends, and stuff like that mm-hmm. that know somebody in one of those divisions, you know. But the people that are just going there because for the love of the sport, for the passion, for the, you know, being a fan of it, you know, I still feel like the majority of those people are going to be there for bodybuilding. Agreed. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't think that's debatable. Um, but again, if they actually did that ticket thing, you know, there you go. There's your chance. Classic it would be interesting fans. to see. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Um, let's see. Classic physique. Classic isn't probably going to be passing that. We know what you're doing for your off season. Um, what about you? I, I didn't even know you were married. How long have you been married? Uh, a little over three years. Three years? It was three years in November. Okay. Yeah. So it was, uh, that was another thing. My actually Aceto let us go out to dinner for, for the anniversary. So that was nice. <laughs> Gave me a good. cheat meal. Yeah. What a what a generous man! <laughs> yeah, well, he okay. told me exactly what I could get, but at least oh. I could... <laughs> white fish. <laughs> uh, yeah, let me have a Baked. burger and fries. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but uh, it was nice. We actually got to go out and stuff like that. But um, it was funny. I actually started with Aceto right the week after I got married. Wow. Okay. And uh, I because they announced that they were going to add classic to the Arnold classic. So I messaged him, uh, like, I don't know, two days after our, our wedding, we were still actually renting a, a, a beach house and staying there for like our like honeymoon weekend or whatever. And, um, I messaged him and he's like, all right, can we start tomorrow? And I was like, can I finish <laughs> eating this cake and like <laughs> having a couple drinks with my wife or whatever? Right. I was like, you know, we're st- he's like, he's like, oh, I told you, you should have stayed single. Now you're gonna, re- now you're not gonna make it or something. He was just joking yeah. around. Now your elbows uh, deep in cake. <laughs> yeah, but it, it was funny. Like I, had, I sent him my first check in pictures. I was like, I ate a lot of cake, but I'm ready to work. And it yep. was, I was a bloated mess. I was like, <laughs> he's probably gonna regret taking me as a client. No, no. I mean, hey, it worked out. It worked out. It now did. he's working with a, a top Olympian. Well, I mean, eleventh. I, I. I consider if someone qualifies to compete in the Olympia, I can I consider them uh, a top athlete in their sport. Um, now I don't know about the whole Fuad Abiyad argument with the, um, the oh, what is it? Yeah, the the uh, was a top tier or elite and the elite body. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I mean I see where he's coming from with it and yeah, stuff like that. It makes sense. Like if you looked at it his terms, I wouldn't consider myself an elite like tier yet mm-hmm. um, until. Like, if you can enter a show, like he was saying, and when they know that you're coming to that show, they're, are, they're looking at you as, all right, we got to watch out. He's, he is probably going to win the show. Mm-hmm. You know, he's well, pro- most likely going to come and win this show. To you be know. fair, it, with, with how you've been placing in the last two shows, like, I think everyone in the right mind is going to be considering you uh, in that top three as long as you come in conditioned. Uh, you know, regardless of who shows up. I, I mean, I hope so. That's, oh. I feel like if I can bring some improvements and mm-hmm. just as good or yes. better conditioning to Tampa this year, you know, that's the goal is to win the show. I don't want to have to do more than one show to qualify. Yeah. I want to come in, I want to win the show and, you know, prep for the Olympia, not do four shows like I did this year. Mm hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's I think that's what everyone really wants, but uh, I think it's very reasonable for you to say that. Yeah, I mean, and I, I guess I get messages all the time because people see the way I eat. I have a uh-huh. very, very ridiculous appetite. <laughs> I eat like I can literally stuff myself to where I can't lay on my stomach <laughs> and wake up starving in a few hours. Like I'm just my appetite is crazy, and I get messages all the time asking if I'm going to move up to open, and you know, I I always just say, look, I 
don't push anything very hard at all. Yes. Besides yep. food and training. Yep. Yeah, I think everyone well, understands. Yeah. And if my body wants to eventually grow and I get, you know, I grow out of 212, then it is what it is. You know, yep. I'll go where I fit. But I'm not going to force it. Yes. I think that's the best way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love to eat. I have a huge appetite. I love to train. And I, you know, I'm fairly strong. And I like to train with like in extreme intensity and like heavy mm -hmm. and push it hard. But, uh, you know, as far as like pushing other things, I'm very, very moderate and don't want to, don't want to ruin my health or my, my, my lines, my, my yep. shape, you know? Yeah. As a fan, that's exactly what I want to hear. So that makes, that makes me as a fan happy. Cause I mean, <laughs> You know, when it comes down to the line, like I am a fan of yours. I'm a fan of bodybuilding. Uh, I just happen to have a microphone as well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was one of the things leading into even uh, like hiring Chris Aceto. Mm -hmm. He's very moderate with things. Good. And I had never done anything before that. Mm -hmm. So that was the, the biggest learning process. I, I, I can't imagine. I'm. I, I, I can assume that that's where my career is going to take me, but I'm definitely not in a rush uh, to, to get there. Well, I always told myself, for one, if I'm doing this just because it's helping me push towards a goal, keeping me focused, keeping mm -hmm. me in check from not going out and partying and doing stupid things, yeah. you know, then I'm doing it and I'm going to stay as healthy as possible. If I ever turn pro and can make an actual career out of this, then I would consider other things. Yep. So after I turned pro and I did my first two pro shows, that's when I went and got my blood work done. And I found I had been dieting for two years straight. Like Oops. I went and my test levels were yep. like at 30 years old, my test levels were like a 12 year old girl. <laughs> so, you know, that's, uh, that's basically, you know, the doctor prescribed me uh, testosterone and, you know, just a TRT dose. And honestly, like, Aceto's never made me use more than my t my TRT until, like, maybe maybe one show. We went a little higher. That's actually really good to hear. I feel like a lot of people, uh, from what I hear, is everyone likes to really push the, uh, the super supplements and... Uh, I think that's a really big mistake, especially if you don't have that foundation of strength uh, exactly. to back it up. Well, that's yeah. why I, I love to hear like someone like you is actually doing some natural shows before yep. considering it because you're pushing your body to your potential first. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I have so, much, so many people like, that so just even even like Fuad has said on his channel, he's like, no, the day I decided to bodybuild this day, I started <laughs> to do stuff, you know? Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. Man, I was on the weightlifting team all through high school, and then I trained for years just working out because I enjoyed it, you know. And then when I decided to do some bodybuilding shows, I still did that for a couple years just mm -hmm. to push myself and stuff like that before even ever crossed them. I was totally against it, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I when I first got it, I, I feel like there's a huge conversation with like uh, natural elitists and. Um, I'm not, I'm definitely not one of them. You know, I love bodybuilding and if you want to make that decision, that's, that's your decision to make. Um, but definitely in, in my organizations that I compete in, it's, uh, yeah, people don't like the uh, super supplements. And I think it's really unfortunate, especially with, uh, you know, some of the smaller organizations that I, I do, there's the marketing's not really there. And I feel like that's one of my biggest decisions to really switch to the NPC, uh, yeah. still in the natural side is there's so much more marketing that, that I can get tapped into. Um, you know, there's the, the foundations are already built to promote shows and really just kind of hop on that hype train for yeah. my natural shows. I was literally the only person using hashtags on Instagram <laughs> leading into that show. And it's just like, yeah, I didn't even have any social media of my first couple of shows. I didn't uh, like, I thought Instagram was for people putting up pictures of their coffee and stuff yeah. like that, you know? Like, so when I was doing, like, the OCB shows and stuff, I, I didn't even have an Instagram, and somebody backstage was like, dude, you got to get an Instagram. That's the only way people are going to know who you are and that you're yep. bodybuilding and that, you know? So I didn't know anything about it. Man. You'll have to... Uh, are your uh, natural shows uh, posted somewhere? Um, I have... I mean, they're probably in some throwbacks or on my Facebook, but... 
I, I could probably find them on my Facebook. Okay, I'll I'll do some digging, and if you find them before <laughs> me, uh, you can send them to me. After. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll DM you a few of the if I can find them on my Facebook. Okay, <laughs> no, uh, none of those glute shots though. I I don't. Uh, Oh, I, didn't, thing. I didn't have striated glutes back no. then. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's something that is like really getting popular right now is everyone just, just doing nude shots with the glutes. It's like, bro, trust me. I mean, you know, do what you want to do, but like those posing trunks aren't hiding anything. Like, that's what I keep. I won't even like a picture if it's like, if the, like, I don't get it. I'm like, we can see your striated glutes with your posing suit on. Yep. There's no more striations see. on the inner crack. Like, a little like, banana <laughs> emoji covering your crack. <laughs> <laughs> it's not yeah it's, there's nothing's being hid <laughs> i don't get it i would never post anything like that yeah it's i, I don't know i'm sure it gets some besides sort of the fact that my mom follows me on instagram and i don't need to be posting that that's that's the worst because like people just see me as an <laughs> it guy at work and then i'm posting like half naked pictures <laughs> uh and i'm now i'm i'm getting better about like putting like censorship things and oh, now yeah. i'm to the point where i'll just like tag my work mom's husband and be like hey bro sorry because i i know when he's scrolling he sees it so i, well, I remember like that. the first time i started i would put up like a progress picture of me like in my underwear or something like that <laughs> and like all my friends were like dude what the hell is wrong with you what are you yep. putting up this and i was like and you know what i'm working hard and i'm mm-hmm. you know just I'm documenting my progress. Yep. You know, and I started gonna... the Instagram stuff, like, honestly, for me to document and follow my own progress. And then, yep. you know, as it started growing, you know, I'm trying to put up more content that people would enjoy where my workouts or my diet and stuff like that, you know, so people can see what I'm doing. Yeah. I like that. You know, if, if people are posting pictures of their deer they shot or the fish they caught, you can post, you know, your hard work and, and let people appreciate it. Yeah. Well, that was my old roommate from my back from my hometown. That's, you know, I'm posting up progress pictures and he's like, yep. dude, what is all this underwear picture crap? And I was like, every single one of your pictures is holding a fish, dude. <laughs> yep. Don't don't even come at me. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you post. Let me post what I want to post. Yeah. Yeah, I'm from a small town of like three thousand, so I I get it. I, oh, I really we had one. It. We had one stoplight in my town growing up. We had no stoplights. None. Yep. All we have are like the blinking ones now, yeah. where they're like, "Hey, caution!" And I was really excited when they put that in uh, when I got oh, home man. for Christmas this year. <laughs> yeah, still stop signs. Yeah. 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 They all the town's grown up now. I went back home. Uh, I don't know, maybe a year ago, or was it a year? When did I sell my house? March. So March of last year, I sold. I owned a house there, still there. I was leasing it out. So we went back in March and sold that house last year, and uh, that town has grown up now. I didn't even recognize anything. Wow. Well, good so, for them. Well, it's right below Tallahassee. Oh so yeah. It's almost like it's turning into like suburbs mm-hmm. for Tallahassee. A lot. Of, it's a cheaper, a lot cheaper there. That's so people nice. can buy homes there, and then it's like a twenty-five minute commute to Tallahassee. Yeah, that's nothing. Yeah. That's good. That's good to see. So uh, we're getting on that hour mark. I don't want to keep you too long. Uh, I actually had a lot of fun. Like I assumed I was going to have fun since I'm a fan of yours. Uh, and, and hopefully the audience kind of got that vibe as well. Um, but I always want to give the athletes a, a chance to plug their stuff. You know, I know you have a YouTube, um, you, your Instagram. Like, uh, Go ahead and the floor is yours. Yeah, you know, uh, IFBB underscore Broku for the Instagram um and just my name jason Lowe, for the youtube mm-hmm. uh and then you know of course uh my sponsors fusion muscle supplements um and uh my posing trunks uh bro active wear yep yep and then um it's pretty much it for sponsorships as far as i go i don't have uh too many like a lot of these people not do, a lot of coals but... not a lot of coals in the oven yeah i mean just enough if I could get one of those uh, um, food and meal prep companies to sponsor me, that would uh, be amazing. Because uh, that's probably my largest bill is the grocery bill right now. Yeah, yeah. But, I, um, I, I was able to get really lucky with um, uh, one of the guys at work cooked meals for me. It was like two hundred bucks. No, it was one hundred and forty a week for like six meals a day, and it uh, was a steal. So yeah, six I meals was, a day for one. Yeah. Yeah, it was four chicken meals and then two egg whites and um, like turkey 
yeah, yeah. I, I got really I'm, lucky with that. I'm pretty lucky with my schedule where I, I can prep my meals easy yep. enough for the week. Uh, I majority of my work right now is online clients. So, you know, I still go in, you know, uh, 6 a.m. to the gym and Mm -hmm. train some people in person, knock my cardio out while I'm there, come home, eat breakfast, and then start working on my online clients and stuff. And, you know, try to, like, get my YouTube videos, Mm -hmm. uh, several of them filmed over the weekend, and then I do my editing work throughout the week, you know. I got to get on that grind. I'm so bad about uh, just like sitting down after a post workout, right after a meal, and I just start recording. I'm, yeah. I'm just burping, and and <laughs> Lord, Lord knows, everyone in the comment section. As soon as I forget to edit one burp, I have 50 percent of them saying, "Yes, the burps are back." <laughs> the burps. And another 50 percent are just like, "This is disgusting." <laughs> uh, oh, whatever. Someone yeah, will like it. Someone yeah, will I, always like it, and someone will always hate it. You'd be no surprised. What you like do. I've had people complain saying there weren't burps in episodes. I'm like, y'all are <laughs> weird, weird people. Oh but, yeah. I mean, well, those are the guys that always know, come back. <laughs> for my for my videoing, my wife works, you know, full time for uh-huh. uh, Advent Health. Oh, okay. So, yeah. 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 So she, I mean, she's busy all the time. So the weekends really the only time. Like I don't have the money to hire a videographer to follow me around and stuff like that. So she helps a lot as far as helping video the content and stuff like that. And then I do all the editing uh, whenever I have time throughout the week. Mm-hmm. So it's a team effort. That's good to hear. I, I like that. That's uh, that sounds like a healthy relationship. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For the most part. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're, we were closing on our house next week. So, okay. <laughs> it's been, little- stress- we started buying the house like, Oh, two weeks out from the Olympia. So stress oh. levels were like, yeah yeah it was that's not a fun process especially when you're dieting and mm-hmm. you're like, it it's like work to get off the couch you're yeah. so depleted and, and in yeah. pain and drained and then you have to go like touring houses and stuff like that and yeah it was uh not the take, most fun pictures. process just and the mar- me. <laughs> oh the market right now is so ridiculous that like we put mm-hmm. offers on probably five different houses and then within like two hours, our realtor would call us and be like, hey, somebody actually offered over the asking price. It's gone. And that happened like five, like everyone's just paying more than asking price right now. It's crazy. And they're going within like hours of them going up up for sale. Wow. You think you think the market would be flipped, if it's, anything. In Florida, I think it's a lot of people like northerners buying houses yep. and stuff like that. But yeah, I could see that. Yeah. So it's it's been a. A fun process for sure. These last uh, this last month or so, but finally we're supposed to close on uh, Wednesday and you know s- start fresh over there. So get out of this little condo that we're in. Uh huh. It's been uh we've outgrown this place. <laughs> I feel you. I'm in a one bedroom right now, and uh, we're getting stationed in San Francisco uh, early February. So very soon. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and we're getting a three bedroom house on base. Nice. So I'm very yeah. two car garage. <laughs> uh, I'm very yeah. excited. That'll be nice too. We have, we'll have a two car garage and right. We're in a two bedroom now, but the second mm-hmm. bedroom is basically my wife's closet. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we have a, a, we have a treadmill in there, a couple pieces of workout equipment. And then the rest of the room is her closet. Wow. That's impressive. So, yeah. So uh, it'll be nice getting in. We it's a three bedroom uh, with a two car mm. garage and everything. It'll be really nice to just have our own space. Plus, you know, owning that instead of you yeah. know renting here. Yeah, uh, I I can't wait to retire from the army and and figure out where I want to settle down. That'll be fun. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. Uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's a fun process. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, Jason. Um, I had a lot of fun, man. Uh, I really appreciate you making time for me to uh, for to sure. share you with the audience, and I'm sure the uh, hopefully the fans enjoyed this episode. Uh, you know, we got got everything plugged. Uh, have a great day, uh, and Thank hopefully you, we can get you back on before you uh, get on stage next uh, this year, 2021. Yeah, anytime. Let me know, man. All right. Well, I appreciate All it, Jason. Right. All right. Have All a good right, one, man. Good one. Yeah. Bye.